Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're all well and healthy. I'm Patrick and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff I like. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video where I shared some of my favorite apps for the iPad Pro, but I use the iPad very much in tandem with my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So I thought I'd make a video about some of my favorite Mac apps as well. Most of these apps sync perfectly between my devices, which greatly improves my workflow. And much like the iPad, there are so many great apps available for the Mac. So instead of trying to cover them all in one video, I'll try to create one video every month. Today, I'll be covering the first 10 apps. Now I know some of these are very well-known apps, but I still wanna cover them in this first video because they really do form the basis of my everyday workflow. And maybe some of them will work for you too. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're getting some value out of this video, give it one of these so YouTube knows you like it and the video will get suggested to more people. I'll put timestamps and links to all the apps in the description in case you wanna check any of them out. So let's ramble. Hold up. Face go up when I pull up. They all on me like one. So the first app I wanna show you is Moleskine Journey. If you've seen my best iPad apps video, feel free to skip ahead. The app is pretty much the same on the Mac as it is on the iPad, which is a good thing. So Moleskine Journey is the first app I open every day and it helps me organize my day perfectly. I've tried many productivity apps before, but this one combines some key features of several apps in one simple and intuitive interface. First, it'll ask you what mood you're in right now. Then I do my first bit of journaling for the day, which helps me organize my thoughts. Then I do a gratitude list. By listing all the things I'm grateful for right at the beginning of the day, I instantly put myself in a positive mindset. Sometimes when I wake up not feeling too great, I'll go back and change my mood after having done this list. Try it, it really works. Once that's done, I set out my goals for the day, which I always try to limit to two or three maximum. Finally, I'll change all my calendar items into to-dos for the day and add any to-dos that are not in my calendar. As I take care of my action items, I'll check them off my list, which is quite satisfying. And presto, I'm 100% organized and ready to be productive. Next, I'll go through all of my emails. I use Outlook for this. I run a client-based business and I need to manage a lot of different email accounts. For me, Outlook is still the most capable email client out there. In the past, the Microsoft Office suite was not that well developed for Mac OS, but that hasn't been the case for some time now. Everything works great. In my workflow, I use David Allen's Getting Things Done system. So for every email, I'll determine whether it needs follow-up. If it does, there are basically two options. If it takes me less than two minutes, I'll do it immediately. If it takes longer than that, I'll send the email to my Evernote inbox to deal with later. As more emails come in throughout the day, I'll repeat the process. Evernote is my external brain. My own human brain is the most chaotic place ever. So unless I have a solid system I can rely on, I start feeling overwhelmed pretty quickly by all the information that's tossed my way. Evernote is the perfect tool for me to organize pretty much everything. I can clip web pages and articles straight into Evernote forward emails to my Evernote inbox, and scans are automatically saved to Evernote as well. And, of course, any ideas I may have, I note down in Evernote, as it is primarily that, a note-taking app. What makes the app perfect for me is its unrivaled search capabilities. I can literally find a photo by the text on the t-shirt I wore that day. When I'm done with a note, I'll either delete or archive it, so I can revisit it if I ever need to. Even the free version offers plenty of storage, so you can archive whatever you want, no problem. If I need to snap a quick screenshot or mark up an image, I use Skitch, which happens to be owned by Evernote. Of course, you can snap a screenshot easily by pressing Command-Shift-3 on your Mac, but Skitch just makes it so easy to snap whatever section of your screen you need and do a quick markup. Then you can simply drag your file directly into whatever app. Plus, it automatically saves all my screenshots into Evernote, which is super useful. For filing and sharing files, I use good old Dropbox and Google Drive. I love Dropbox because it resembles the internal filing system on your computer and it integrates into it perfectly. You can choose Dropbox as your saving location just like any other folder. But what's really awesome about Dropbox is that it syncs your cloud files in real time 
which means you can access all your files directly from your desktop without needing to allocate space on your hard drive. We all know how much Apple charges for internal storage, so this feature is super valuable. And it also more than justifies the cost of Dropbox Plus, which I believe is $9.99 a month and gives you two terabytes of space. The reason I use Google Drive as well is because some clients prefer it and because of its great collaboration tools. I know Dropbox offers this as well, but Google does it better. Now if Google could just fix the manky user experience on the iPad, that would be perfect. For creating documents, I use Microsoft Word. Just like Outlook, I've been using it my entire student and professional life and I don't see any reason to change it. It is what it is. Everyone knows it and I won't bore you with any details. What I do want to mention is PDF Expert. This app is hands down the best app for reading, annotating, creating, signing, and even editing PDFs. I've used other PDF editors before, but this one is the most intuitive and feature rich one I've used so far. If you use PDF files in any kind of professional capacity, I highly recommend this app. It's available on both iOS and macOS, and it's not the cheapest app, but for me, it's definitely worth its price tag. To communicate with my team and my clients, I use two apps, Slack and the desktop version of WhatsApp. Slack is basically a beefed up messenger specifically designed for business users. You can chat individually with clients and colleagues, set up chat groups, and even make in-app video calls. Slack uses channels to organize project topics and you can invite any member of your team to join a channel. That way, the general stream does not get cluttered and nobody gets bothered with stuff that doesn't directly concern them. WhatsApp is primarily a mobile messaging app, much like Facebook Messenger. In fact, Facebook bought WhatsApp in 2014. I don't want to be grabbing my phone every time I get a message, so this desktop version is a fantastic solution. There's a one-time process to connect. Simply use your phone to scan the QR code and you're all set. Okay, I know we've already covered 10 apps, but come on, Microsoft Word doesn't count. So here's one more app that I just couldn't leave out, NordVPN. In this day and age, we're exposed to all kinds of cyber threats. There's free Wi-Fi spots pretty much everywhere, but most of them aren't exactly secure. A VPN or virtual private network allows you to connect to a public connection in an encrypted way, keeping your private data safe. An added bonus is that you can choose any location in the world as your virtual location, which allows you to access content that would usually be blocked by geolocation. The app is paid, but once you purchase it, you can download it and use it across all your devices. If you're in the market for a VPN, then Nord is definitely a solid option. If you're interested in giving it a try or any of the other apps, I'll put a link in the description. And that is it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to get a notification for next month's best apps video, please subscribe and hit the bell so you get a little ding dong once that's up. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.